Hi, I'm Kerry Lord. This video forms part of a series to accompany the Edwards Menagerie Crochet Collection of Animals, Birds and Dinosaurs. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what I refer to as a slip stitch traverse technique. And I'm going to cover slip stitch traverse to move across the fabric and a slip stitch traverse to start a route from which you would then continue to double crochet in addition, like a horn or a, a separate claw. So initially, I'm just going to flip Barney the Owl around here and I'm going to tra slip stitch traverse a line across his stomach. This is not um, what you'd normally be doing to your owl. You'd usually be using it on your heron's head, say, or to traverse across your hedgehog's back to position his spines. But it's a lovely, nice, clear space for me to demonstrate this technique while you learn. So tie a slip knot. Um, as normal that's just to start it off very securely before you sew that in go into your fabric where you want to start this traverse line slip stitch into position pull that tight and then you're going to move across the fabric so go in slip stitch slip, yarn over and then slip stitch back through that whole lot in again to the next one yarn over and back through that fabric. In again. And if you are a right-handed crocheter, I would always recommend trying to move this way across the fabric from right to left. I just find it gives me a neater effect. So you just continue across that line, slip stitching in. Let me just pull back a little bit there. And you can see what it does is gives you a lovely, neat set of slip stitches across that round. Now, you could then continue to go into a chain to do a slip stitch spine. That's where you'd be using this in a lot of the patterns, like the heron. That would be her headdress and the secretary bird. You'd be coming along and then you'd go up into a slip stitch spine to finish. So now I'll show you the slip stitch traverse route. And what this is doing is giving you a base upon which you can build stitches to create the optional fourth claw that's talked about in Edwards Menagerie Birds. So I've built these patterns so that they're accessible for a beginner. The leg, if you just do the leg as Barney's leg here, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just doing your three splits and finishing the foot off like that. But what this claw option allows you to do is create a claw that moves in this direction out from the fabric. And the reason I've chosen to introduce this technique, if you made the claw as a separate piece, you'd be sewing on a very small little bit. This avoids having to do too much sewing on and stuffing. So tie your slip knot again. And slip stitch into your fabric. And what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch traverse a six stitch route from which we'll run up. So we're going to go in the fabric and slip stitch one stitch, one. And go in again, two. And we're working round in a circle. Three fabric, three. Four. It's a bit easier if you do this um, prior to sewing your entire bird up because you'll be moving it around with you, especially if it's a chunky one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just going to pop my sixth stitch in. Slip stitch through. And as you can see, what I've done is made one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in a circle on the fabric. And so what I'll do now, that's my root. That would be like your chain round, say you were starting this um, freestanding. And now you're just going to double crochet into that, those stitches. First one can be a bit awkward, as it often is with the first stitch of any round. Double crochet into those. And this is where your bird wants it sewn. It really will fly around with you. In your next stitch. A 
and your whole claw will build off that original root and you won't have to sew it on afterwards. It's already attached very neatly and seamlessly to the project. Like that. And this is a technique that now I've um, perfected it, I seem to want to use more and more because it does avoid that sewing up. So with this um, triceratops, which is one of the latest patterns, the whole of this headpiece here is actually using the same technique. So what you've done is you've slip stitch traversed all the way around that round of stitches, turned and back round the other way to create a huge round that you set off from. But it avoids having to make this as a separate piece and any messy stitches because what you get is an absolutely perfect join where that headpiece goes into the fabric. 